Understanding Parkinson's Disease Parkinson's disease is one of the most common degenerative diseases of the nervous system. It is most common in people over 65 years of age and can affect younger people as well. Patients under 40 are classified as young onset Parkinson's and make 10 to 15 percent of all cases. In Parkinson's, specific neurons in the brain start to malfunction. They make less of a chemical called dopamine that is involved in generating movement. Scientists do not yet know exactly what leads to the death of these dopamine-producing neurons. In most cases, they believe Parkinson's is due to a combination of genetic changes and environmental factors, with young-onset patients perhaps having a stronger genetic contribution. Parkinson's symptoms can be broadly divided into two types, motor or movement-related and non-motor symptoms. Non-motor symptoms might show up earlier, but can occur throughout the disease. Non-motor Parkinson's symptoms can include loss of sense of smell, sleep problems, constipation, and depression. Some non-motor Parkinson's symptoms may be associated with Parkinson's medications. These can include daytime sleepiness, hallucinations, or seeing things that aren't really there, drops in blood pressure, and psychosis or losing touch with reality temporarily. Tell your doctor if you have any of these symptoms. Changing medications may help. Tremor is not always present but can be the most noticeable motor symptom of Parkinson's disease in many cases. The tremor is usually in the hands at rest but can also be present in the legs or even the chin. The resting tremor of the hands is often described as pill rolling with the thumb and other digits involved. Other motor symptoms include slow movements or bradykinesia, stiffness, reduced facial expression, changes in posture, and trouble with walking and balance. Motor symptoms usually start on one side of the body and can spread to the other as the disease advances. There are a variety of rating scales that Parkinson's specialists sometimes use to track changes over time. Doctors sometimes divide Parkinson's disease into five stages. Progression is typically slow but can vary from patient to patient. In stage 1, mild symptoms, usually including tremor and other motor symptoms, affect one side of the body and produce little disability overall. In stage 2, symptoms make daily activities more difficult. Movement problems are on both sides of the body. Posture and walking can be affected and disability is mild. In stage 3, movements are moderately slower, balance is more affected, which puts patients at greater risk of falling. Dressing, bathing, and doing other daily activities have become significantly more difficult. In stage 4, significant mobility issues require the use of a walker to move around. Patients need considerable help doing daily activities and are unable to live independently. In stage 5, balance and movement problems are severe enough that the person needs a wheelchair and nursing care. They may also have noticeable mental changes, delusions, or hallucinations. Learning about the stages of Parkinson's can be frightening. However, not everyone with Parkinson's will progress to stage 4 or 5. It's important to remember that Parkinson's affects everyone differently, and you may or may not have all the possible symptoms. There is no specific test for Parkinson's disease. Your doctor will determine if you have Parkinson's based on your medical history, signs and symptoms, and a careful neurological examination. To learn if you have Parkinson's or another condition, your doctor may ask you a series of questions about your health and medical history. They will also ask about the health of other family members, such as your parents, grandparents, aunts, and uncles. Among other things, your doctor wants to know if anyone in your family may have had Parkinson's in the past. Most Parkinson's is related to a combination of genetic factors and environment exposures. Your doctor will also examine you carefully. This should include observing for resting tremor and slowness of movement that affects one side of the body more than the other, as well as checking for stiffness in your limbs. Additionally, he or she will look for any postural or balance issues. The presence of two or three of these symptoms is suggestive of Parkinson's. In addition to the cardinal motor symptoms described earlier, your doctor may want to determine the response of your symptoms to Parkinson's medications, such as levodopa, which replaces dopamine in the brain. People with Parkinson's have less dopamine due to the loss of dopamine-secreting neurons. 
improvement on Parkinson's medications further supports the diagnosis. Medication is the main treatment for Parkinson's disease. Medications your doctor prescribes will likely help your Parkinson's symptoms, but they also can cause side effects, and some medications become less effective over time. Parkinson's treatment has two goals. The first is to manage your symptoms as well as possible. The second is to minimize side effects of treatment. Parkinson's causes movement or motor symptoms and non-motor symptoms. Medication can often control motor symptoms for many years. These symptoms include tremor, stiffness, and slowness of movement. Your doctor will probably need to adjust your medications over time. It's important to tell your doctor about all your symptoms and even keep a daily record or diary of how you feel. This will enable more effective medication adjustments. The medications you take for early Parkinson's may be different from those you take later. There are three main medication classes for Parkinson's, dopamine agonists, MAOB inhibitors, and levodopa. The decision as to which class to begin treatment with will depend on your age, symptom severity, and the potential side effects of each medication. These medications help simulate, extend, or replace, respectively, the brain chemical dopamine, which is reduced in Parkinson's disease. Dopamine agonists cause dopamine-like effects in the brain. These include premipexol, ropinirole, and roticotine transdermal patch. MAOB inhibitors keep the brain from breaking down its natural dopamine quickly. They include selegiline and drosogeline. They can be effective for early mild symptoms. Levodopa helps replace dopamine in the brain. All Parkinson's disease patients eventually take carbidopa levodopa, or levodopa for short, which is the gold standard treatment. Several forms of deep brain stimulation, or DBS, should be considered for motor complications that are not improving significantly with medication adjustments. DBS treats problems such as tremor, stiffness, and slowness of movement. DBS involves placing tiny electrodes into specific areas of the brain. They are attached to a battery-powered stimulator under your collarbone. Your doctor can adjust the stimulator to deliver electrical signals that will help alleviate the movement problems.